Diagonalization is a process that allows us to perform incredibly large computations almost instantaneously. Given a square matrix of numbers, sometimes it's possible to change it into a matrix with only diagonal entries. Now this matters because the formula for multiplying two diagonal matrices takes only n multiplications if it has n rows, which is significantly less than the n cubed multiplications it takes to multiply non-diagonal matrices. Now this may not seem like a big deal, but when we want to repeatedly multiply large matrices, like taking a matrix to the kth power, these differences stack up in a major way. In fact, the simple formula for diagonalization lets us compute things that would otherwise take even our best computers too long to compute. This works because our starting matrix A and our diagonal matrix D are related by a special change of basis matrix P, and when we take our equation to a large exponent, all of the P and P inverses in the middle cancel out, leaving us only with an equation that takes our diagonal matrix D to a large power. Now, I wouldn't be making this video if there wasn't a beautiful way to visualize diagonalization. And it starts with understanding what an array of numbers actually represents. For example, take a single column of this matrix, or any list of three numbers. Sometimes, it's useful to interpret three numbers as a point in 3D space, corresponding to the number of steps you take in the orthogonal x, y, and z direction. Often, we visualize an arrow or a vector that goes from the origin to the point instead, and when we do this, it becomes clear that our list of three numbers correspond to combining our unit x, y, and z vectors tip to tail. You can write any vector as a combination of these unit x, y, and z vectors. They're special, and that's why we call them a basis. They're very important, and diagonalization is all about changing the basis. While a column of numbers represents an arrow in space, a square matrix of numbers typically represents what we call a linear transformation. It's a function that takes in vectors and outputs different ones. You can calculate this function by scaling each column vector in the matrix and summing row by row to get the output. We can see how this works in practice in 3D. Say we want to input the vector 112 to our transformation. Well, after scaling and summing each row, we see we get the vector 020. So our transformation takes 112 to 020. If we want to know where our unit x, y, and z vectors go, all we have to do is read off in order the columns of our matrix. Now, if we know how to transform our unit x, y, and z vectors under the transformation, we should be able to transform every point in 3D space with this transformation. And that is exactly what a linear transformation is. It is a bending or morphing of 3D space. Now, if this is a lot to take in, don't feel bad. The point is that a square matrix of three numbers corresponds to a transformation of 3D space. The tricky thing about linear transformations is that the same transformation of 3D space could have different matrix representations. Earlier, we said that the three columns of the transformation corresponded to where you sent the x, y, and z unit vectors. But the big idea of diagonalization is that you can instead describe where different basis vectors go. We can pick a set of basis vectors that are only scaled by our transformation, so that our representation is of a diagonal form. How we model 3D space in general depends on our choice of basis vectors. Because the entries of a vector correspond to the addition of basis vectors, our representations are dependent on our choice. Here we see the same arrow being built with two different bases. When we separate the concept of linear transformations from matrices, we get a whole new perspective on our problem. Diagonalization is about finding the right set of basis vectors to describe the transformation. When we find a set of basis vectors that do not change direction under the transformation, then we have everything we need to understand our diagonalization equation. First, you change your basis. Then, you scale your direction invariant vectors. Then, you change back to the regular basis. This has the same effect on 3D space as just applying the original transformation, but we have utilized a change of basis. This was just a broad overview of how diagonalization works, but there are so many good questions still to ask. If you know any of the answers, comment below. Thank you for watching.